While exploring awards elements for inspiration, I stumbled upon an incredible video player featuring a dynamic timeline that lets you jump seamlessly between different parts of the video. Inspired by this, I decided to build my own video player using vanilla JavaScript without relying on GSAP or any other animation library. In this tutorial, I am gonna show you how I managed to create a decent version of it. First of all, I had to integrate the play pause functionality as it's a fundamental component of any video player. The cool feature is this interactive timeline. You can click on any point along the timeline to skip to that specific frame in the video. And when the video ends, since it's set to loop, the marker automatically resets to the beginning of the timeline. I've also made sure this player is responsive, ensuring it works smoothly on mobile devices as well. If you find this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. A quick reminder, you can unlock access to the source code through CodeGrid Pro. Check out the link in the description for more details. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start by adding a wrapper element named Overlay, which will contain all our video player components. We'll organize our video player into three main sections, the video container, cursor, and the video timeline. Inside the video container, I'll place a video element set to autoplay, muted, and loop. This will be identified by the ID main video. We'll also specify the source of the video file here, making sure to set the type as MP4. Next, the cursor section will feature a paragraph element which will update dynamically based on user interactions. Moving on to the video timeline, we'll break this down into three parts. The video marker, video timestamps and video frames. The video marker will be styled using CSS and initially we will leave it empty. For the video timestamps, we'll include paragraph elements to display the time intervals throughout the video. In the video frame section, I have prepared snapshots from various moments in the video. Each snapshot will be placed inside a div with the class frame. I'll be adding 9 snapshots that I have exported earlier. And that's the structure of our custom video player. Now let's move on to styling these components. Firstly, we apply a universal reset for margins, paddings, and box sizing to border box to ensure consistency in our layout across different browsers. For the HTML and body elements, we set the width and height to 100% and set the font family. Images are styled to take up the full width and height with the object fit property set to cover, ensuring they will fill their containers without distorting. Paragraph elements are styled with white color and a font size of 13 pixels. The overlay container spans the full viewport, providing a base for our video elements and ensuring they cover the entire screen. Inside the video container, we use a fixed position to anchor it to the center of the viewport. It's set to take up the full viewport width and height with overflow hidden to prevent any unwanted scrolling. The video within this container also stretches to fill the area, maintaining the aspect ratio with the object fit property. For the video timeline, positioned absolutely at the bottom, we create a flex container to neatly align timestamps and the frames. It's designed for interactivity with a pointer cursor on hover. Timestamps are spaced evenly across the width of the timeline for easy navigation through the video. The frames are displayed in a flexible row with gaps and dashed borders for visual separation.
Each frame reacts visually on hover, indicating interactivity. So I'll create a pseudo element on top of the frame which works like a black overlay on each frame. On hover, I will remove its opacity so the frame becomes visible. Video marker is crucial for tracking the current position within the video. Positioned absolutely at the bottom of the video timeline, it's a thin red line, 2 pixels wide and 150 pixels tall that will move along the timeline. The transition property is applied to the left position making the movement smooth over 0.5 seconds. Video marker pseudo element adds a decorative element to the marker, a red dot that enhances visibility and aesthetics. Positioned centrally at the top of the marker, it's a small circle of 10 pixels by 10 pixels with a border radius of 100% creating a perfect dot. For responsive behavior under 900 pixels width, adjustments include reduced timeline height, selective hiding of some timestamps for clarity in smaller spaces, and adjusted gaps between frames. The cursor and certain visual elements are hidden to prioritize space and functionality on smaller screens. That's it, let's get to JavaScript to make everything functional. When the web page fully loads, our script begins by finding and storing references to various elements in the DOM using document.query selector. Specifically, it locates the video element, the moving marker on the timeline, the timeline itself, the cursor, and the paragraph within the cursor that displays the text. First, we set up a variable called is playing to true, indicating the video is initially playing. We add an event listener to the video for the time update event. This event triggers every time the current playback position changes. Inside this event, we calculate the percentage of the video that has been played by dividing the current time by the total duration. This percentage is then used to update the position of the marker on the timeline, making the marker move as the video plays. Next we add a click event listener to the timeline. When the timeline is clicked, we first prevent any other click events from being triggered accidentally by using stop propagation function. We then calculate where the timeline was clicked in relation to its total width. This calculation determines what percentage of the video should be played based on where the click occurred. The video's current time is then set to this calculated point and the marker is adjusted accordingly. Another click listener is added to the document. Here we check if the click was outside the timeline. If it was, and depending on whether the video is playing or paused, we either pause the video and update the cursor's text to play or play the video and change the cursor's text to pause. The is playing variable is toggled to reflect the new state. Lastly, we track the movement of the mouse across the entire document. As the mouse moves, we update the position of the cursor to follow the mouse, providing a responsive visual element that enhances the user interaction. With this event listeners and interactions, we have created a dynamic and responsive video player that not only plays and pauses the videos, but also allows users to seek precisely within the video and visually track the current position. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.